time now for everybody's favorite guessing game, What's My Line? Brought to you by Remington Rand, makers of the world's number one electric shaver, the Remington. Now, let's all play What's My Line? Now, let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in papers from coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And now it's a great pleasure to introduce a new game player on the panel this evening, the sylph-like, new, thin, fat Jack Leonard. And now presenting to my left, one of the most charming of all theater, television, and radio, and all the new other mediums, Miss Arlene Francis. Thank you, Jack. And now a gentleman, probably the youngest successful gentleman I know, who authored The Seven Year Itch, and this year is represented by Will Success Spoil Rock Hunter, with my husband, Martin Gable, and a young woman named uh, uh, Jane, uh, Jane Monroe, no, Jane Mansfield, uh, Mr. George Axelrod. Thank you very much. I've been watching this show for so many years. I've always wanted to say this. Uh, on my left, Mr. John Daly. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to What's My Line. Once again tonight, we're up to our old tricks. We have some good ideas tonight. I think some of them may give the panel some trouble. We're reasonably sure they will. But the cameras and the challenges and some interesting occupations will all get tangled up together very soon. We'll also have our famous mystery guest before the panel a little bit later in the show. We'll meet our first challenger in just 30 seconds. Now let's meet our first contestant. Will you come in and sign in, please? Right there. How do you do? <laughs> well, you don't want to finish it. Mr. X. What's your first initial? Uh, <laughs> dot, I guess. Actually, panel, I must be honest with you. This is Mr. X, because if we were to give you his real name, we feel it might reveal a little bit too much. However, if you take a good look at him, I'll hold you up and you look at the panel. <laughs> then you come with me, if you will, please, sir. Sit down right here, and uh, do you know how we score things? Yes. All right, fine. Then let's let the folks at home and our friends here in the theater know exactly what your line is. All right. Panel, Mr. X is self-employed. And let's let the young lady you want to know about the initial start things off, Miss Arlene French. Well, Mr. X, you look as though you were an outdoor man. Does your job keep you out of doors at all? A little. Uh-huh. Do you use any implements in your work? No. Uh, let me have a small conference, please. Uh, no implements. <laughs> no implements, Miss <laughs> Francis. That's one down and nine to go, Mr. Axelrod. Well, uh, sir, <coughs> could, I have, could I avail myself of your services? Yes. I don't think you had to say it that permanently. <laughs> well, sir, sir if, if I were to avail myself of your services, would, would I be improved from so doing? Yes. Uh, and uh, would this improvement be... Uh, no, noticeable to the to the eye. I mean, would, would it make make a marked change in me in some way? Yes. Oh. Certainly, we can assume this, George. I think that um, it should, and in a good many instances, perhaps in your case, it would. Uh. <laughs> yeah, dear, dear, dear. I, it frightens me. But let me let me go on to the end. Uh, is, is is what you do in some way physical? Yes. If I were to come to you for these services, uh, no, may, I, may I change that? May I say, uh, do you wear something other than you are wearing now when I come and avail myself of these services? Uh, just a moment. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Yeah, there's a certain area of error basic in the question as you ask it. Uh, it assumes things which are not necessarily true. Oh, and therefore, much as I am loath to do it, George, I have to give you a no. Only because there's so much well, error maybe, in uh, the question. It means he would wear such clothes, or uh, we just forget no, the whole question. No, I would question. say just, just think of it as question. never being answered. That's All the right. best way. Two down and eight to go, Miss <laughs> Kilgallen. You wouldn't want to give a hint about the area of the question that was presupposing something fakey-poo, would you? No. <laughs> I didn't think so. Uh, you say you work sometimes out of doors. Is it possible to do what you do indoors, Mr. X? Well, indoors and sometime outdoors. Actually, I think here, Dorothy, to be fair, the issue of outdoors and indoors, as it's been raised, it not, is not very important. Actually, uh, it can be done indoors or outdoors and is very probably done in the main indoors, yeah. right? Yeah. That's well, are you in an enclosure when you do your work, in some sort of an enclosure, whether it's a house, a building, a thing? In the house. Mm -hmm. uh, are you primarily concerned with services rather than a product? Services. There's no product involved? No. Yes, uh, there is not, no. Can women take advantage of your service as well as men? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> can women take, do women take advantage of your services? Oh, yes, yes. Yes, oh, oh fine. I didn't, I didn't hear this. <laughs> do you speak to them? Does he sometimes speak to them? Sometimes. Mm -hmm. But it wouldn't be necessary, is that right? You could do whatever it is you do without talking? He can do whatever he has to do to them without talking to them, yeah. Do you, do you move about? In other words, you're not chained to a desk, are you? Ah, mm. uh, mm. mm. uh, well, there we are. Mm. Mm hmm yeah. Now, this is, is a cloudy area here. I think it's fair, though, Dorothy, to answer your question affirmatively. It, he is not He's not necessarily to attached to a desk, no. Although he may use a desk and use it quite a bit, he's not necessarily chained to it. it sounds like a rather interesting profession. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, may I assume that you do not require a special education for this job? Mm, no. You don't need a degree? No. No. And you don't have any other title besides Mr. X. You, you're not... Uh, you don't have a peculiar title such as judge or uh, marshal or... Peculiar? <laughs> I mean, other than mister. <laughs> no, I think that the kind of title that Miss Kilgallen is referring to is not applicable mm -hmm. here. Well, we're not getting very far, very That's fast, true. are we? <laughs> um, could you deal with little children? Uh, no. Unlikely. No, I would say here we would assume that little children would not be involved. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Leonard. And I think, actually, you, you're so lost in this one, I'm going to give you about one minute. Uh, tell me, uh, what's this guy's name again? <laughs> uh, you see, uh, just a moment ago, you said you, 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 uh, you, you work on, on the outside, then all of a sudden you moved into the inside. No, well, uh, we were explaining... You take a actually, shortcut to everything, don't you? Jack E., we were explaining that the, this is not necessarily vital to finding out what the line is. It can be done outside. In this instance, actually, in the main, it is done inside. Well, I hope he's not a thief. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm only kidding. I've never been on a show, and I think I want to make that a habit. But anyway... Uh, <laughs> you, look good, you, look, uh, you look wonderful. You're not bad either, you know. But anyway... Uh, <laughs> Do you work, uh, is it a profit-making uh, organization you're associated with, uh, any place you are or whatever you do or something? <laughs> uh, let me hear you answer that and I'll surprise me. <laughs> <laughs> I think we can safely say someplace. that it's meant to be a profit-making organization and very probably is. Well, he can't sell fountain pens and he writes too short. But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Where's that Paul Winchell must be around here somewhere. Anyway, uh... You deal in men and women, I hope. <laughs> men and women? Yeah. Uh, mostly men. Well, uh, that's clever. Uh, <laughs> do you by any chance, uh, I mean, do, 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 uh, do you touch them or something like that? No. No, it doesn't touch them. Sorry, Jackie. That's four down and six to go. Miss Francis, I'm going to give you one minute from now. Well, Mr. X, is there anything protective about your job? No. no. Five down and five to go. Mr. Axelrod. Sir, I use something in the nature 
Could you be called in any remote way an instructor or teacher? Uh, yes. Uh, do you instruct in something akin to physical culture? Yes. yes. Are you Charles Atlas? Yes. yes. <laughs> George, I just couldn't turn my back on that chance what? to talk about what would happen to you if you took his services. I hope I didn't give you too any hints that way. Give me an inferiority well, confidence. <laughs> I didn't mean to, George. This you was having must, some you fun. must have been the kid who was on the beach, I guess. Yeah, I was the 97-pound weakling, but now, now, Jack, I guess that's more your department. <laughs> I guess, I, I lost weight. I lost people. But anyhow, uh, uh, Mr. Atlas, I didn't recognize you with your clothes on. I guess that's the reason. <laughs> Well, Mr. Atlas, we had an awful lot of fun, and I hope you did, too. Thanks very uh -huh. much for joining us. I nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice story, George. Well, a very brilliant beginning with the help of Mr. Axelrod. Let's see if you can't repeat, panel. Let's try a second challenger. Will you come in and sign in, please, ma'am? Ma'am? And? And a phone number, please. <laughs> And Carruthers, is that right? <laughs> is it Miss or Mrs.? Miss. Miss? That's right. Where are you from? Woodland Hills, California. Woodland Hills, California. That's right. Mr. Leonard, you'll be in New York for some time, won't you? Fine, good. <laughs> would you take a look at the panel, please, Miss Carruthers? Panel, would you look at Miss Carruthers? Yes, yes ma'am. <laughs> right, stop. All right, Mrs. you Charles sit right Edwards. down here. You know how we score things. Mm -hmm. Good, then let's let everybody at home and those who are with us here in the theater know exactly what your line is. <laughs> All right, panel, Miss Carruthers is salaried. I've never seen you look so eager, Jack, so let's see. Start <laughs> the general questioning with Mr. Leonard. <laughs> well, uh... Miss Crothers, uh, are you, is there a product involved in what you do? Yes, there is. Is the product found around, uh, around the house or anything like that? Yes, uh-huh. Does this product uh, come in contact with the, with the body? Yes, uh-huh. <laughs> uh, is it considered a sort of a wearing apparel, or I hope? Is it considered a sort of wearing apparel, I hope? I'd... Let me have a conference. I'm sorry, <laughs> fellas. I've got to work this out. <laughs> Mr. Leonard, I'm sorry. I'm afraid we'll have to say no to that. That's one down and nine to go. We don't consider it wearing apparel. Miss Francis? Hmm. But you said it does come in contact with the body. Yes, that's hmm? right. Uh -huh. hmm. Could it come in contact with the body from the waist up? Yes. Uh, could it come in contact with the body around the head? Yes, uh-huh, that's right. Uh, could you buy it in a store? Uh, oh, it's a private selling thing. Well, now, let's see. Now, I would say, if you were agreeable, that taking the general product, we would have to admit this is purchasable in a store, the general uh -huh. product, yes. Yeah. Well, does it have something to do with something from the neck up? Yes. Uh, would it be on the head as opposed to on the face? Yes. Would it be hair as opposed to hat? Yes. Do you have something to do with wig making or toupee donning? Mm. Hmm. Yes. <laughs> I would just like to say I'm terribly surprised that Jack didn't guess that. <laughs> I have an exceptionally wide part. I don't need it. <laughs> I well, I haven't yet guessed what she does, have I? Yeah, I'm afraid you have. Oh. She makes wigs. Oh, she does <laughs> make wigs. When you said wigs. wig making, you did it. Yes, actually, Miss Carruthers is with a gentleman named Mr. Wright on the West Coast, who is very famous in this area, I believe. You do all of the wig making for one of the movie companies, don't you? Yes, uh, Warner Brothers. Warner Brothers, and you do make toupees? Yes. Mm -hmm. I should think she'd be working for Warner Brothers in another capacity with such a pretty face. 
Yeah, I was going to say that, too. Yeah, who Jane. needs wigs when they have her? <laughs> <laughs> well, I must say, Miss Carruthers has come much too far just to turn one card over, so we'll turn all the cards, and I'm awfully sorry that it didn't give them more trouble. I wish it had. Thank nice you. to have had you with me. Now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity, for which my friends on the panel are blindfolded. Are the blindfolds all in place, panel? Yes, sir. Oh, yes, yes, sir. sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, good. That's <laughs> splendid. You've been very good so far this evening, but I think, panel, we can give you a little bit of trouble now, so I will ask our mystery challenger to come and sign in, please. As you know, in the case of our mystery challenger, we go to a different form of questioning. You will ask questions one at a time, in turn, moving clockwise. And let's begin with Mr. Axelrod. Uh, judging from the applause, may I assume that you are in the entertainment field in some way? Most assuredly. Ms. Gilgallan? Are you an actress? Yes. Mr. Leonard? Uh... <laughs> I, I, I hope that should have... Are you in the mo moving picture uh, industry as, uh, as an actress? Yeah, yeah. Miss Francis? Are you a, considered a leading woman rather than a character actress? Well, I, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Axelrod? I don't know why I said this is a foolish... Are you a blonde? <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Now, definitely, Miss Gilgallan. Uh, have you... Were you at the Cannes Film Festival? No. That's one down and nine to go, Mr. Leonard. Have you a, a picture playing uh, currently on Broadway? Well, I really couldn't say. I haven't been there in such a long time. Actually, this is something where I admit I'm at... Uh, something of a loss. There are so many movie theaters, and I can't be absolutely certain, but I would say this, Mr. Leonard. Yes. Uh, if a picture with our guest in it has been recently released in the New York area, it would be on Broadway. Miss Francis? Do you ever play in musical pictures? Yes. Mr. Uh, Axelrod? Uh, I've got to start breaking it down the only way I know. Uh, I, have you, are you currently under contract to 20th Century Fox? No, sir. Two down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. Are you Deborah Paget? Well, I just don't... Well, I really can't say it for that right <laughs> now. <laughs> the answer is no. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Leonard. That voice sounds uh, very familiar. I, I, let me see. Uh, <laughs> let me see. Polly Moran's out of business now. Let me see. <laughs> you, you, you're a blonde, and... Uh, you, oh, let me see. You might be about... Uh, are you, are you about five foot, five foot? <laughs> well, I think I'm a little bit taller than that. Five foot and a half. Let's not get hysterical about that. <laughs> All right. Hey, you've got it. Five foot and a half, generally speaking, Miss Francis. Uh, you dance and sing, then, as well as being an, as an actress. We established that you were in musicals. Is that correct? Did we establish yes, that? You do? Yes. Um, now... Uh, Mr. Axelrod asked you if you were 20th Century Fox, and you said no, but are you associated with any studio? Are you under contract to any particular studio rather than freelance? Uh, no, no, no. Oh, that dear. makes it four down and six to go, Mr. Axelrod. Well, I, I had gathered that she said she's not been on Broadway recently. Have you appeared as on the stage in, on Broadway within the last five years? Oh, I've always dreamed of such a thing, but no, sir. You're talking <laughs> to the right man. Five down and five to go, Ms. Gilgallan. Are you married? Yes. Mr. Leonard. Well, I, I, I hope you don't think I'm being... Uh, what would be the word? I only had two years of high school. Right. <laughs> this voice sounds very familiar, uh, Mr. Daly, if I may call you so. Uh, <laughs> there's a certain little... Uh, what would be the word, Miss Kilgallen? You write Intonation. You have a certain intonation that, I, that sounds very familiar, and I, I hope that I'm right, because if you're the little girl that I might have made a picture with about three years ago, with Gord McRae, who since then has bought a state called Oklahoma, and, uh, <laughs> and also went up to Maine and tried to grab that, too. Uh, 
Did you make a picture with Gordon, Mc, uh, Gordon McRae and Gene Nelson? And also at the time that I uh, was about 320 pounds, called Three Sailors and a Girl? Yes, I did, sir. Oh. You're not Sarah Needleman. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, it's Jane Powell. It is Jane. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Jack, that was wonderful. I made a picture with this very wonderful girl. She treated me so wonderfully, I, I may make her my leading lady as soon as I lose four more pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Jack, I highly recognize you. You don't look the same at all. Well, I hope so for my sake. <laughs> well, I, you well, I did a wonderful number with her. I mean, she did the wonderful number. It was called Show Me a Happy Woman and I'll Show You a Miserable Man. And boy, it was a great number and I enjoyed working with you. <laughs> Look what happened to him. <laughs> well, I became a star. <laughs> well, I'm certainly you... glad to see you, Jane. I hope your husband allows me to take you to dinner. Oh, of course, I he did. may come along also. <laughs> you can bring your wife. What too. about her three youngsters? Can they come? They're gorgeous. They're absolutely beautiful. And I, I, I tell you, I, I'm upset about this whole thing. Aren't you upset about this whole thing? <laughs> I have a well, different I must... feeling about Miss Powell than you would have, oh, Jack. I <laughs> hope so, for our sake. <laughs> well, Miss Jade, I must say that their three youngsters are as charming and as lovely as their mother. They've got a running start on the rest of us. And My thanks pleasure. a lot for being our guest. Thank it was you. wonderful to have you with us. <laughs> Gotta make another picture. You also have about three minutes, panel. Let's see if we can give you a quick run and see how well you do with it. With the next challenge, you come in and sign in, please. Sarah. Sarah Detweiler. Is that right? How are you? Is it? Is it Miss or Mrs.? Miss Detweiler, will you look at the panel? Where are you from? Apopka, Florida. Apopka, Florida. Well, come with me. I'm an old Apopka boy from way back. And you sit right down here, if you will. You know how we score things? Yes. Good. Then let's let everybody at home and those with us here know exactly what your line is. more than two minutes. Miss Detweiler is salaried, and we begin the general questioning with Miss Kilgallen. Uh, Miss Detweiler, do you do anything that requires skill or agility? Yes. Dexterity? Is it in the realm of sports or athletics? Yes. You move very beautifully. Do you... Work? I would say this, Dorothy, so that you're not misled. Athletic skill, agility are necessary, but it does not necessarily mean that it's in recognized Athletics is so described. But if called upon, you could do something out here on this stage that probably none of the rest of us on this panel could do, right? You got a little... <laughs> yeah, I guess... Yeah, I guess... Mm -hmm. uh, could you... Could you lift him, Mr. Leonard? Oh. Could anybody? Oh, no. You're talking about the old Jack Leonard. No, no, no Miss Darcy. Couldn't do that. One down and nine to go, Mr. Leonard. What is the name of this town you, she's from? May I ask, Mr. Daly? Uh, I've only been on the show uh, once. Papa, yeah. Papa? What is it? <laughs> a Papka. A Papka. A Papka. Are you, a, are you a, a water skier or something like no. that? No. Two down and eight to go, Miss Francis. Uh, do, you, uh, do, you, do your work ever where it's cold? Nothing on ice. All right. No. No, I wouldn't think so. I think it wouldn't happen. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Axelrod. Well, these... Uh, uh, by salary, I'm new here, too, John. Sal salary means, service, uh, means she deals in services, does it not? Well, this is, yes. this is not about her. This is in general. Oh, no, actually could be a product if you um, want to ask. Yeah, well, does she deal in services? Yes. Yeah, that's what I was trying to find out. I thought mm. salary meant the same thing. Uh, and could I avail myself of these services? Uh, you could yes, under certain yes. circumstances, yeah. Would I come to you to avail myself of them? Me? No. Let's go. Lady. Oh, well, no. Actually, it's too bad we've run out of time because this is a honey. Hang on to your chairs. Miss Detweiler dives 45 feet into a tank on horseback. On horseback? On horseback? <laughs> I might say, uh, not at the steel pier in Atlantic City. It's done, and I think I've got to go see this myself. Thanks very much for being our guest. It was wonderful to have you with us. Good night. Next week, this is John Daly saying goodnight, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen.
And it's awfully nice having you. Good night, Jack. Thank you. Good night, Arlene. Don't forget to see Paul Winchell next week. He'll be with you. I will, but it was nice to have you with us, Jack. Thank you. And you too, George, and good night. Oh, thank you, Arlene. In this chair, I am told, next week will be Robert Q. Lewis, which will be wonderful. Thank you, John. That, that will be, and Paul Winchell will be back with us. And may I add my words of gratitude that we had two such fine gentlemen as Mr. Leonard and Mr. Axelrod with us here, tonight. Here. Thanks for being with us, and good night, ladies and gentlemen. Travel arrangements on What's My Line are made for American Airlines. American Airlines flies our contestants in luxurious comfort aboard DC-7 flagship. This has been a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production in association with the CBS television network. Be sure to watch Remington Rand's other television program, Caesar's Hour, on another network.